Greetings, everyone. I am Eric's father, Tim Ho. Today is Saturday, May the 9th, 2020. And we welcome you to Julia and Eric's wedding ceremony. We would have preferred that all of you would be here in person, but the families are thankful that you can join us virtually today. In just a moment, we will witness the marriage of Julia and Eric. Presiding over the ceremony is Pastor Young Kim. So sit back, relax wherever you are, for this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. may be seated. Welcome everyone, as Eric's father said, this is the wedding for Eric Ho and Julia Na. We're really quiet here. I don't know, I hope you guys are listening to music on, on where you are, but this is a great honor and a privilege. Uh, in the midst of everything that's happening, um, we were praying earlier about how you can't stop love. Right? Even the quarantine, global pandemic, can't stop it. Love will prevail. And uh, so if you're with us uh, streaming live, I'm gonna pray and we're gonna get started on this ceremony. So Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for joining these two amazing beautiful families together. We thank you, Lord, for Eric. We thank you, Lord, for Julia. We thank you, Lord, that as individuals, Lord God, as they come together, Lord, in the covenant before witness of family and friends, Lord God, your presence, Lord God, is right here with us. And there is no greater joy and honor than, Lord, to be in your presence. So, Father, what an honor it is, Lord God, to witness and to see these two individuals, Lord God, as Eric and Julia become husband and wife. Lord, we invite you, we honor you, and we say, Lord, all our family, friends, and just ones that are streaming, Lord God, live on Facebook, Lord, may your presence, Lord God, be with them as well. So we invite you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, welcome everybody, and uh, thank you, Eric's parents, Sang and Joel. I was thinking about today, and I was telling, uh, I think, somebody. <laughs> Ju oh, yeah. Julia is a uh, crib mate with my eldest daughter, oldest, uh, Ellie. And uh, so as I was getting ready and preparing, it, I, I imagine what my oldest wedding day would be like. You know, I'm sure like you guys are a lot more nervous than I am. But um, what what an honor it is to witness from birth to childhood to now a young beautiful lady being married to Eric, handsome man. <laughs> you guys did well. You guys did well. Yeah, we we applaud you, both of you. Um, anyway, so um, before we continue, um, I asked Eric and Julia, is there a scripture verse that you guys want me to prepare a message for? And they asked um, Ephesians chapter 5, 21 to 33. Uh, it's interesting because this is instructions for Christian household. Okay? And so I'm going to read verses 21 through 33, and then I prepared a uh, brief message tailored for you guys. Okay. So, Ephesians chapter 5, 21 through 33 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is probably a very famous passage. Uh, I, I would say probably six out of ten weddings that you go to, this is a, a scripture verse that you know, many people use. Um, we, we, we love how it begins, even as men. Uh, maybe especially for men. Wives, submit to your husbands. Yes, that is a good word. Okay. But if you continue on, Paul doesn't stop there, but he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Okay. How much did Christ love the church? Enough to give up his life. So there's an analogy of marriage in, in this passage uh, about husband and wife, but in the end, Paul says, I'm not talking about marriage per se, but it is about Christ and the church. Christ being our groom and the church being the bride. Okay? So the very first thing that I want to give to you guys, encourage you with, is submit to one another. Okay? It's not just Julia, Eric's your husband, so come on. Submit, Eric, yeah, if you want to. That's not the case. Okay. As Christ gave himself up for the church, right, he was known as the servant king. King of kings, the Lord of lords, God himself comes and he says, you know what, I'm going to submit. I'm going to come low and I'm going to be the servant of all. Okay. So it's amazing that you know, the Bible talks about how we're the most powerful being. You know, we're sons and daughters of God. Right? We're, we're the head, not the tail. And there's a, so many different references about how God looks at his children as amazing, powerful head and you know, leaders. And the first instruction that he says as husband and wives is what? Submit. He doesn't say, now take hold and lead and you know, forget about everybody else behind you. No, he says, submit to one another. Why? Because Christ submitted to God himself. Equal. The Trinity. God, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. But Jesus came and he submitted under God the Father. So when he came on earth, he said, I only know one thing. And that is to do exactly what the Father is asking me to do. And what does the Father ask him to do? Submit. Everything that I'm asking you to do, Jesus, will you submit and will you do? And that's all Jesus did. And so whenever he was confronted, whenever he was asked, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He's like, I, I just do what the Father tells me to do. I just submit. Okay? And so the first thing is, again, submitting to one another. The second thing right, is make God the center. Okay? You know, when I was younger, or <laughs> when, I, when our kids were younger, uh, four daughters and, and a son. In the beginning, I didn't know how to do French braid. Right? The only thing I knew how to do was ponytail. Okay? Because you just grab like, you know, a wad of hair, you know, get a rubber band and just tie it as tight as you can and then pull it. Right? And then their hair is like, it's beautiful. It's, it's new. Okay? You don't even have to brush it. And then later on, I realized, you know, <laughs> even as our girls were getting older, Dad, can we, can, can we, can, can you try a different style? Right? And so I looked and I learned 
and I realized that French braid is more beautiful. But when I first started, I just grabbed two strands. And I thought it was just kind of intertwining, right? Like you braid. But I quickly realized that's not two, but you need another strand in the middle. Okay? So the French braid is actually, it looks like it's just two strands, two braids of hair, but there is a middle cord, there's a middle braid that actually allows the two to come together. That has to be Jesus. That has to be Jesus in your lives, in your marriage. Okay? He has to be number one. Okay? Yeah, your, your parents, you know, Julia, I don't know how uh, long your parents have been married, Eric, you know, Hannah and I were coming into our 26 years, okay, and, and we learned some stuff, but the greatest lesson that I learned over all these years is God has to be number one. If I choose to love God more than my wife, more than my kids, then His love allows me to love my wife and my kids more than I could ever on my own. I didn't learn that in the beginning. I thought it was, yeah, you know, like I just gotta love and sacrificial and provide and give, you know, and be there. And as much as I thought I had God as the center, it was me kind of being the one that was leading and kind of saying, God, you back me up. God has to be in the center. Just like what we're doing right here. Right? Inviting God into the presence saying, Lord, we want to honor you. Okay? And every day choosing for each other and saying, we'll submit. But we're going to make God the center of our marriage. Because if we make God the center of our marriage, your love for Julia, your love for Eric, Sky's the limit. There is no cap. There is no limitation. Why? Because God's love is unconditional. Our love is very finite. I know Eric, you're like, mm -mm. my love for Julia is it's, it's enormous. It's huge. It's magnanimous. Okay? But when things don't go your way, Julia, when things don't go your way, you realize that there's limitations to our love. But God's love is limitless. And so we invite Him. Do everything. I, I love what it says. Uh, more than anything else, I just want to leave verse 27 because this is the verse that really just got highlighted. And that says, And to present her to Himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. When you look at each other, and you're going, yeah, Eric is perfect right now. Julie is perfect right now. Five years, 10 years. Yeah, they can, you know, a little bit of improvements. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see some flaws. Okay. But it's okay. okay. I, I love what 20, verse 27 says. It says that if you, as much as you're going, I want my wife to be generous and kind and beautiful and giving and all this. It says, pre prepare her to present her to yourself. So it's basically saying as much as what, what I envision my wife, what I envision my husband to be, it's up to me. I'm not going to just leave it up to say, hey, this is the kind of wife that I'm expecting. This is the kind of husband that I'm expecting. But it's saying, you do it. The kind of wife that you want, the kind of husband that you want, you do it and say, Lord, how do I not change, but Lord, how do I mold, how do I pray, how do I intercede, how do I love and respect and honor, submit to my husband, to my wife, so that I make them presentable to me, not to the world, who cares about the world, okay? because again, the focus needs to be how do I prepare my wife? How do I prepare my husband so that I made them presentable to me? When you go shopping, both of you, do you choose the most ugly, the most unfashionable, the most cheapest? Well, sometimes. <laughs> No, but when we go shopping, we always look for the best. Okay? We go to the fitting room, we try it on, you know, we imagine, right? Where can I wear this? And when I wear this, 
what kind of compliments will I receive? Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting this. Okay. You, because you envision, you, you imagine what it will look like, and so you are presenting yourself with this piece of clothing. Just as when you look at each other saying, you know, my, my prayer for my husband, my prayer for my wife is how do I make them presentable to myself so that when I go, oh yeah, I've done good. I did well. This is the best version that I can ever imagine my husband or my wife to be. Eric and Julia to be. Because this is what Jesus did. Jesus comes, he's coming, right, to the church as the groom. But when he comes, he's not going to come and go, oh, what happened? I left you for a few centuries, you know, a few, a few couple thousand years, and this, this is what I get? No, so everything that he does, he's going, I'm preparing, I'm preparing, I'm preparing you, so that when I come, I've prepared you to be presentable to me. And then lastly, Bringing out the gold, bringing out the best. It's easy to see the dirt. It's easy to see the flaws. And I'm sure we've all done this before. You know, uh, name ten things that you know you don't like about yourself, or you want to change and improve. Ba 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 ba. Easy. What's ten things that you love about yourself that you are just thrilled and happy about? Uh, I can come up with maybe two or three things, right? and we struggle. I don't know if it's just human nature. It's easy to see the flaws. It's easy to see the weaknesses. My encouragement is see the gold. Right? Bring out the best. Again, because it is for one another. And when you bring out the best for one another, guess what? You just made Eric, you just made Julia presentable to who? yourselves. As God being the center, the focus, say, Lord, I'm doing this because honor, respect, submission, right, unto you. Unto you. You guys got all that? <laughs> <laughs> Eric gave me a blank stare. <laughs> Julio is like, that's easy. I'm a school teacher. <laughs> okay? I can, I can uh, repeat everything that you said to me. <laughs> We're going to go into the exchange of vows. Okay. So again, just to recap, submit to one another out of reverence, out of respect, but also, again, to bring out the gold, okay. to see the potential in one another, okay. and to present, prepare one another presentable to yourselves. So. Um, I'm going to have you hand the bouquet over to your mother. Okay. And I'm going to have you guys come a little bit closer. Okay. They're going to be husband and wife, so six feet, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, so I'm going to have you guys hold hands. We're going to do the vows. Right. <laughs> it's okay. My hands are sweaty, too. <laughs> All right, Eric. Um, Repeat after me. Or, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to say the vow and then afterwards um, you'll say I'll do. Okay. Eric, will you have Julia to be your wife? Will you pledge your life to her in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness to live with her and to cherish her according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage? Julia, will you have Eric to be your husband? Will you pledge your life to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him and cherish him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? Okay. We're halfway there. Eric, I'm going to hand you the ring. Grab her wedding ring. Put about halfway in. There you go. Okay. We're going to exchange <coughs> the rings now. So Eric, repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. 
I pledge to you, Julia. I pledge to you, Julia. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> Julia, take your little finger. Repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I pledge to you, Eric. I pledge to you, Eric. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. He says amen. <laughs> <laughs> Liam approves. <laughs> My hands are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Julia and Eric wanted to use this time to honor the parents. Okay. And so if you guys want to turn around and head over to Julia's parents first. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. to position. <laughs> Olivia will hand over the bouquet to Julia. Play by play. Facebook. <laughs> You're getting a play by play right now. <laughs> Before I uh, give the pronouncement, um, I'm really excited and thrilled uh, on this day for both of you guys. I know, Julia, you, you went through some difficulty, and Eric got sent right, to be there for her, to be there for the family. And uh, again, it's just the goodness of God. Yeah. Yes. And so to see you guys as husband and wife, not boyfriend and girlfriend, right? uh, I, I'm sure if I'm thrilled and excited, I can't even imagine what your parents are feeling right now. So we're, we're so excited and I'm thrilled. And so by the authority committed unto me as minister of the Church of Christ, I declare that Eric and Julia are now husband and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, whom therefore which God has joined together, let no man separate. All right, Eric, this is your first act of duty as a husband, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great privilege and the audience in Facebook, on Facebook to honor and present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Eric and Julia Ho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. sorry. All right, go ahead. Hey everyone, we just wanted to thank you for watching and um, supporting us through the past couple of months and making this feel really special to us. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little choked up. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, take it away. Okay. <laughs> uh, we just want to thank you all for um, all your support and love towards us. We wish you could all be here with us. But, um, we thank you for joining us <laughs> through um, the live stream, and we hope to see you all soon. Thank you.
Um, oh, the family. Oh, yeah. The family can get us. Yeah, yeah, family. Family. Everyone come in. Oh, oh. You, where are you going? Oh. We're going to say hi.